Hello, Editing Kelly here, just to give a slight disclaimer at the beginning of this video. So I realized that my microphone was totally off in the settings for this video. I had done a live the night before and had the settings on for that and then forgot to change them for this video and actually one more. So if you are wearing headphones, you might want to turn the volume down a little bit. I did the best I could equalizing the sound in editing software, but it still sounds a little bit like I'm eating my microphone. Uh, I wish that I had had the time and honestly the energy to redo this look. Uh, I also didn't, you know, I wanted to give you guys this look first chance. I didn't want to be practicing, so this is raw. I'm sorry, it sounds a little raw. If you're new to my channel, I promise the audio quality here is normally much better, but as we get into the video, it's gonna be a little rocky, so I apologize. I hope you still enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. Now, let's get into this episode of Nailed It. Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am so excited and a little nervous for today's episode of Nailed It. Now, if you aren't familiar with this series, this was started by Lexi Jung, and it's really all about taking a theme or a picture, something that you're starting with that you've been inspired by and recreating it. Now, whether you choose to try to nail that on the head or you decide to just use that as an inspiration and adapt it in your own way is up to the different creators, but today, I'm gonna try to get as close to this look as possible. So I'm gonna scooch a little bit here so we can see. And this beautiful look is done by Marvin Guedes. And I think that I'm saying that right, I hope so. But this is such a beautiful, expertly blended look. Now I have to say, while I love the eye look, the skin is a little bit more coverage than what I would ever feel comfortable doing on myself normally. So we'll see if I decide to adapt that a little bit but we're gonna try to nail this look today. Now, there are several other wonderful creators here on YouTube that are going to be doing this challenge as well, so I will make sure to have everyone linked in the description bar below, but if you wanna see me try to nail this look, let's get right into it. Okay, so I, first of all, want to start off by saying that I'm trying to utilize a little bit of natural light, but it's kind of cloudy today, so I'm sort of trying to use a little bit of artificial, a little bit of natural. I hope it ends up looking okay. It looks pretty good right now on my viewfinder, so we will see. The other thing is that, of course, on a day where I have to film and there's this like super flawless skin look, um, I woke up with like the hugest breakout. I am honestly having the worst skin that I've had in a long time, so please forgive that. I did start out with a layer of a little bit of concealer since this is such a high coverage look. I won't have a problem putting foundation right over the top of it. Now, because this eye look is so dramatic, I really wanna be able to have the ability to just, just blend and blend to my heart's desire and go in and swipe and clean up as needed. So I'm going to choose to do my skin as the second step, so we will get into that eventually. Now, I'm gonna tie my hair back because it's gonna be difficult enough without all of this in our way. So, honestly, this skin look, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's not really my cup of tea, like she's very matte. Um, I mean, she has a lot of highlighter on, but she's very matte and very, very full coverage. I'm trying to like see her. I mean, obviously most things have been a little bit digitally enhanced, but it's it's very, uh, very full coverage. That might be the part of this look that I, I don't quite like nail it on. I might just do a little bit softer skin, but we'll see as I go through. So this is definitely gonna require an eye primer. I'm gonna choose to go through with Soft Ochre from MAC. I did go ahead and my skin is so dry right now, so I did put a really nice amount of moisturizer on. Um, that should hopefully help keep this from getting my eyelids really dry. That is one thing that I find about the paint pots is it's not usually something that I go towards in the fall and winter time because it is a bit dry. All right, now that we have that paint pot laid down, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and powder. I'm using a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder, and I'm just gonna powder like the upper part of my crease and my brow bone. I'm just wanting to really set this to make sure that um, we're not gonna have a lot of like skipping or patchiness, this should just help those powders go on a little bit more smoothly. I'm not actually gonna powder like my lid and into my crease because I honestly, I kind of wanna be able to really stick uh, shadow down to that. And because these are gonna be mattes, I feel like those can tend to be a little bit more powdery. So you want something 
with a little bit of like tack to it and honestly the paint pots they tend to dry down anyway so this is just a little extra insurance for blendability. That was a long rambly way to say I'm just throwing this above my crease to help us blend. I am kind of hoping to be able to recreate this from kind of a mishmash of palettes and singles that I have. I do think that I should be able to get most of the colors out of all of my Makeup Geek single pans. These are like the original formula. I think we should be pretty good. The only thing that I'm gonna have to pull in is a bright yellow. And so I think I'm gonna try this one from the um, Anastasia and Alyssa Edwards palette. I might use a little bit of this blue too. No, that blue's not gonna work. I, I also got out a navy from my Lorac Pro 2 palette. I'm just, I'm not really, I don't have a lot of blues. So I think that this one will work. So we've got like three different groups of shadow here. Now, speaking of, the one rule of Nailed It is that you can't buy anything new to recreate a look. And so that's why I'm kind of like pulling out a bunch of stuff, which is gonna be kind of fun because I actually haven't used these a lot. I have pulled out my Makeup Geek ones recently, but definitely not the super colorful ones. I haven't reached for Alyssa Edwards in a long time, and I do love the, the Rock, but it's not something that I've grabbed. So let's go ahead. We're going to start out working from lightest color to deepest color. That way we can kind of blend as we go. We're going to need lots of brushes. Now, since this look is going to involve a lot of blending, a lot of like color transition, I'm probably just going to do more of like a time lapse and I'll voice over where needed. Now, I think what my intentions are going to be is to very slightly overlap each segment with the previous tone and then that way we'll get a really nice blend and then we can just like blur those colors together. Fingers crossed, we'll see how this goes. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a download on what I'm doing here. So for this look, I decided that I was going to need a few flat shading brushes to be able to lay down those colors with intensity and then I just use a few mini blender brushes. So as you see, I went through with that Brick Road shade from the Alyssa Edwards palette. Now I'm going through with the Makeup Geek shade in Poppy. Now all of these Makeup Geek shades are the classic original round pans. I have so many of these, I love them, and this was a great way to use some of these. So I felt like eventually, and I'm not sure if it was here or later, but I did feel like Poppy just needed to be deepened up. So I did kind of go between Poppy and Morocco, which Morocco actually looked like it had a little bit more of a brown base, but it just really had that intensity that I needed. And you can see that I slightly overlap each shade with the one before. I'm not focusing too much on blending right now. This is really just to lay down those colors. Now we're going through with the Alyssa Edwards palette. I use the shade Texas Made to be able to get that pink, and I'm going through with the Sigma E36 brush. This brush I have many of because I think it's so great for precise blending. And just, I, I did start to try to like work this together and then I realized, okay, just don't waste your time yet. Just lay down these colors. So now I went through with a combination of Unicorn Tribe and Fashion Addict. So Unicorn Tribe is in the Alyssa Edwards and Fashion Addict is another makeup geek. You can see some more laying down of the product with a flat shader and then blending through. Now I did make sure that I was really only blending one shade into the next and not like getting those shades murky. If you start combining them too much, it's gonna get really murky because you're basically gonna be creating brown if you combine the entire rainbow, which is pretty much exactly what we're doing. So now I did decide to go through with BBDC. This is again in the Alyssa Edwards palette. This looked so dark in the pan, but that like smoky richness is exactly what I needed. So again, just a lot of layering to recreate the depth and the tones that I was looking for. Man, you guys, I wish this is like real time that I could lay down these shadows this quick, but that's not what happened. Then I went through with the shade Duchess from Makeup Geek. This was sort of that good like indigo transition between the purple and the blue. I felt like maybe this would be enough, but I did decide that I needed to go through with the navy from the Lorac Pro 2. You can see here, I'm like, okay, Kelly, more blending, more blending. Now again, when I'm blending, I try not to go too far in so that I'm not making that transition murky. A little coffee for some energy to keep on blending. All right, so here we're going through, starting to use that navy from the Lorac palette. I really just felt like it needed more depth. These colors on the models look, they're a little bit like richer and smokier, almost like that really deep. And I needed that from this navy. So I thought that this was the perfect color and I really do love the Lorac shadows. So I was really alternating with two or three blending brushes. I think it was just two, but you can see here I'm using one on the violet, purple, and teal shades. And then I had one for the like pink, 
orange and yellows just again to make sure that we don't start getting brown and muddy so here is where i was just starting to struggle a little bit i didn't have quite a vibrant teal i started with makeup geek peacock and that was really pretty it had the depth that i needed but i needed something with that little bit of brightness that a little bit greenier teal if you will so i went through with shark bait which did help like in the transition where i was blurring but it still just wasn't bright enough but i was doing the best i could all right so here just cleaning up and adding a little bit honestly you'll find especially with matte shadows that if you start blending you'll you may start to lose some of that color and in all honesty if you do it too much it may get patchy so i was just trying to go back through lay down some of that color i really struggled a little bit where the purple went in and that's one thing about this Alyssa edwards palette it has pretty colors but they they are a little bit finicky it's definitely something that you have to blend and blend and be careful with so just trying to work that inner color up since this model has her blend all the way up to the brow bone on that center area I think another thing that's worth noting is looking at how far my hand is down on the handle of the brush. You can see that I'm not holding it close up to the ferrule. The further away you hold your brush, you're going to get a little bit more of a light, delicate blend. When you hold it a little closer, you tend to use a little bit more pressure and you don't get quite as much of a blur. So really just trying to get that very blurred edge as much as we can without Photoshop. All right, now the one thing that we don't have on is the brow highlight, but I'm going to wait until I have my brows done to do that. I'm going to do the skin. I'm going to clean up some of this. You guys, we have like eyeshadow shrapnel everywhere. It is kind of crazy. So first, where should we start? Okay, uh, we're going to start by putting in some whitening eye drops. Wow, my eyes are really red. Please stand by. All right, we're back, and the foundation is on. The eyes are significantly less red. Um, they're still a little bit irritated, but they're less red. I did go ahead and throw my brows on because nobody needs to watch me put about 30 grams of dip brow on, which is exactly what I did. This picture has a very, like, um, very Instagram worthy brow. So I probably will add a few brow strokes, um, just with one of my brow pens towards the front here, but I did want to let you know what I used on my skin. So I went through with the Jane Iredale Beyond Matte Foundation. This is definitely one of the fullest coverage foundations that I have. I feel very makeuped right now. Made up? I feel very, you know, you guys know what I mean. I feel like I have a lot of coverage on. I'm probably just going to put a tiny bit of concealer underneath my eyes. Looking at her... Looking at this model, it, I don't feel like she's very highlighted. I feel like her skin is pretty well, like monotone, if you will, other than her bronzer. So I don't, I don't feel like they did a lot of like highlighting under the eye. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of concealer on to give a bit of brightness, and then maybe I'll do a couple brow strokes. So I'm just using this brush to sort of precisely get this worked up underneath my lash line, but then I'm just using my finger to blend and meld this in a little bit. Just, I feel like I have so much coverage on that I'm really trying to like press it all into the skin just to avoid like uh, creasing down the road. I'm gonna powder right away. I'm gonna go through with an oldie but a goodie, the RCMA No Color Powder. And I am gonna end up setting my whole face. I'm just using the Wayne Goss Airbrush um, just under the eye, just because I feel like it, it places product so well in like areas that you have to get into the little nooks and crannies, if you will. But then I'm just going to go through with a bigger brush over the rest of my face. And since I want this to be like still full coverage and not move around any, <laughs> anything that I lay down, I'm just kind of like patting this in, not necessarily buffing it. This is the most foundation you guys will ever see me wear. So if you've ever wondered what I would look like with full coverage, here you go. All right, let's go ahead and finish up the under eye just so I can put all of these eyeshadow palettes away. So I'm just going to continue with the shades that we used on the upper lid. I don't feel like we're going to have to do quite as many though because when I look at this, I don't even really see the blue. I almost see the yellow into the like ready orange and then maybe just a dash of purple and then the teal so this shouldn't take too long 
famous last words. So here I just took three separate pencil brushes, one with the Brick Road shade, and then just went in with that Morocco shade, and then just went through with, I think it was just Peacock, but it could have been Peacock and Sharkbait. I'm sorry that I don't remember that, but you can see here, I'm just sort of like packing, and then once that shadow is laid down, then I go through with an almost dry brush and blur it out just so I don't get fallout all over my freshly concealed eyes. If you guys have a really bright teal shade, especially if it's like an indie brand single pan, let me know because I obviously need to add one to my collection. Okay, so now that I have all that color laid down, I'm just going to take this E36. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm just using that to like gently buff and blur those colors together. All right, you guys, I am pretty happy with that. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I feel like, ugh, it's like super hard to get this purple to blend out, which I actually feel like I remember from this Alyssa Edwards palette. So I feel like I knew when I grabbed this palette, I was like, okay, some of these shades are really gonna work, but you're gonna have your work cut out for you as far as the blending goes, but it's not too bad, it's not too bad. All right, now the one thing that I see is that she has a very vivid blue liner in her waterline. I'm, I only see it, I mean, you can't really see her, you can barely see her eyeball, but you can't really see her top waterline. So I'm just gonna do it in the bottom. I have this L'Oreal Silkissimi, this liner, I don't even know if they make these anymore, but it's blue cobalt. All right, liner is done. Now, I always, I always like to ask Jeremy if he's around, like, what do you think? Like. What's your opinion? And he, is, he had mentioned like, oh, I feel like the blue, well, he said the blue, but he meant the teal, that the teal needs to be more bright. And he's right. I wish I had a brighter, like more green teal. And I thought, I thought that one of these would work. One of these two right here. Um, and that's what I have on my eyes. And it just, it just doesn't come out quite as vivid. I went through all my palettes. I just don't have anything that's quite that vivid. So Again, can't buy anything, can't buy anything new for this challenge, so we're just working with the colors that we have. I think this is pretty darn close. We do obviously have to still do a brow bone highlight, but I'm just gonna use what I use on my face. So I think what I'm gonna do is go apply some mascara and some lashes, and we will keep moving on. All right, we're back, lashes on. It's amazing what a good lash can do for a look. I did go through with, I can't find it now, but I went through with the Anastasia Lash Brag Mascara. It's decent, like I got it in a Trend Mood box. It's okay, I probably won't ever buy it again. Uh, I did go through with the Chandelier Luxe Lashes. This is the style Lady Grace. These are so beautiful. I was gifted these. I wanna give away on Sean Kay's channel. She is the founder of Chandelier Lashes. And I really think that these are beautiful. Now these are a mink lash. I'm really hoping that the company comes out with some vegan lashes. If if they did, I would I would definitely go snag some because they're beautiful quality, so pretty. Again, these are Lady Grace. I'll make sure to link her website down below. Now let's move on to the face. We definitely need a good dose of bronzer. Yeah, she's she's definitely bronze. She's already like a deeper skin tone than I am, but we are gonna need a good dose of some bronzing. So I'm gonna go through with the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer. I'm, I don't know, I feel like she is, I mean, she's obviously got a deeper skin tone than I do, but I'm wondering if I'm gonna need something with a little bit more warmth to it, perhaps. We'll see once we get a little bit of this on. I can always dust another one over the top. Yeah, I think we definitely need something with a little bit more warmth. Since I already used Jane Iredale foundation, I'm gonna go with the bronzer. This is the So Bronze 2. Um, I am going to, though, try to avoid the glitteriness of this. Um, I just want the matte side. So we're gonna take that same brush and pop this on. Now, I know that I probably use a smaller bronzer brush than a lot of people, but I just feel like First of all, in a pan like this, it makes it really nice to be able to get the accuracy of the color that I want, but um, I'd rather just have to like buff and blend a little bit more than get too much, especially with the bronzer, because I think a lot of people can start carrying their bronzer too low on the face, and then you just, you just lose that definition in sculpting. So 
So I think what I'm gonna do is just go through and mix the Samantha March Chiclet Blush. I think this is just gonna give us that little bit. She does have like some glowy action going on. So I'm just tapping the slightest bit of that on and then I'm just gonna blend this in. Yeah, I really love this color. This was one of my top 20s of 2020. If you guys missed my live that I did talking about all my favorites, I will make sure to link it up above. There were a lot of fun ones. We had a good time. Samantha March herself came into my live chat. That's probably gonna end up being like the highlight of my 2021 and we're only like two weeks into the month. So now let's get out some highlighter. Now, when I look at this, I feel like it's just that like perfect nudie champagne. It's not too pink, it's not too gold. I am going to go through with an old school fave, the Mary Luminizer. And I'm very strategically just gonna lay a little of this down because this can get intense. Mm, she has it pulled a little bit further down on her cheeks, which honestly I would not normally do, especially since this area right here is where I start to get a little bit of texture, but we're nailing it. So I gotta do what's, what's in the inspiration. Well, I guess I don't have to, I could choose not to, but today I'm just trying to recreate this as close as possible. Again, the nose highlight, I'm not a huge fan. I can tell that she's got a little like nose contour too. I guess I should go back and do a little bit of that. Do I wanna bother with a nose contour? Not really, but I'm gonna do it for you guys. I think I'm just gonna go through with that cooler tone shade though. So we'll pull out the Marc Jacobs and I'm just gonna take this little Moda brush Let's set all of these 75 pounds of face makeup we have on. So I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Give a good whack of this. Okay, you guys, I, I mean, if you are into very full coverage makeup, I think that this is really quite lovely. I am not. So it's a little bit much for me, but the eye look I could definitely wear. Like I would totally wear this. It did take a little bit more time than I would normally want to do in my everyday, but sometimes you just got to do that. Now let's move on to the lips. So when I look at this, it's just that very nude, like peachy. It's almost, mm, it's almost like her foundation is blended down onto her lips. I don't know if I'm about that life. I'm going to go with something really nude. We'll see what I pull out. I gotta look through my collection. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I have thoroughly looked through my entire collection. I don't have anything. I mean, it really does look like she's got foundation on her lips. Like that is honestly what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to take this Rimmel Spice Pencil and just outline my lips for a little bit of definition. And then I will probably mix like a little bit of concealer and a little bit of lip gloss to get that, that like ombre skin to like flush look. I have no lipsticks that would even emulate a tone like that. So I'm gonna take the concealer that we use, the No Filter Concealer. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the back of my hand and I'm gonna mix in some of the M Cosmetics uh, color drops. I think that's what these are called. This is the shade Peachy Peach. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of that into this. So you guys can kind of like see the ratio there. And I'm just gonna like whack this on with a lip brush if I can find one. Honestly, most of my lip brushes I end up repurposing to be like inner corner highlight brushes. So I don't really have a lot of them. Oh, this is not flattering. So I tried to like overline a little bit. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I'm gonna take a little bit more of those color drops. The problem is, is like my lips are, are really pigmented. They're more of like a peachy color or a pinky color. So 
I'm not going to get that like peachy pout because I feel like what they did was they honestly just like blurred in her foundation onto her lips and like left the inside more nude and whacked on a gloss. This is like, ugh, I don't, I don't love it. I don't love it. I really want to do something different, but I'm trying to stay <laughs> true to the picture. Mm-mm. No. All right, I'm just going to throw a little of this Luxe Lip Oil over the top. Okay, you know, sometimes when you have to say enough is enough, I'm, I'm calling it here. Like, this is a struggle. I don't love this at all. Like, this lip, but it's as close as I can get and feel comfortable with. All right, I'm going to be honest, you guys. Like, once I'm done taking photos for this and doing all of that work, I am going to take this off and I'm going to put on another color. So I think what I'll do is take some pictures so we can kind of compare and then I'm going to put on a different lip shade just so we can see maybe how I would wear this. How does that sound? Okay. It's just makeup. We can wipe it off, but I'm going to take out my hair. Let's see what we think. I still feel like I probably could have put on a little bit more bronzer, but... Mm, I'm not as dark as she is either, so we're like scaling it back a little bit. I need lip injections. I don't know. It's not, it's not bad. Like this reminds me very much of like when everyone was buying like really light toned MAC lipsticks. Totally makes my lines look really emphasized. Okay, we're back. The lips have a little bit more tint to them. I much prefer this. I think it's still very soft. It lets the eyes shine, but it's something that I could actually wear. And you know what? To each their own, like every artist has their vision that they're going for. That was just not mine. So what I did is I actually went through with the Alme Smart Shade Butter Kiss. This is the nude light shade. You can actually still get these, but then I did top it with a little bit of the Clinique, uh, the Clinique Pop Melon Pop Lipstick. I don't think that they make these anymore. I really enjoy these. They're just a very like creamy, creamy lipstick. So I will show you guys the two shades. So here you guys can see, this is the Melon Pop and then this is the Elme uh, Smart Shade one. So just that really like nudie, corally pink. It's just your basic nude. Like I just, I just have such pigmented lips that I feel like if I go over with anything too light, Mm, it's just not cute. So altogether, I really love this look and I think that you know the picture is beautiful The model is beautiful. Sometimes you just have to find something that's a little bit more suitable for you So I wanted to show you guys both options and I think that's really what it's all about is like Pushing yourself out of that comfort zone and if it's not for you, that's okay. And that's what happened for me today I am so excited to see everybody else's videos from this week I will make sure to have all of the creators linked down below so that you guys can check out their recreation And also I will have the original creator of this look linked as well I will have their Instagram Again, if you guys want to check out like I was checking out his Instagram and it's like wow There are some really pretty looks so I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me If you aren't subscribed and you did enjoy this, please consider subscribing Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos including Future nailed it. So you can let me know in the comments down below. Did I nail it for now you guys? That's gonna be it. I will see you really soon